Welcome to College Smart Radio, helping you bring into focus the true cost of college and how to tackle the runaway cost of financing a college education. College Smart Radio is hosted by Beatrice Schultz, a certified financial planner and founder of West Face College Planning. Now, here's your host for College Smart Radio, Beatrice Schultz. Welcome to College Smart Radio. Chances are that you've been hearing about massive open online courses, also known as MOOCs. They've been making a lot of news lately. Respected institutions like Carnegie Mellon, Columbia, Duke, Harvard, MIT, Stanford, and Yale have started offering them. MOOCs can be a good choice for students who want to watch college lectures or explore new interests, but if your ambition is to use online learning to earn a college degree faster and cut college costs, there may be a better choice. On today's College Smart Radio program, we're going to talk about low-cost alternatives for students to take college courses online. Hi, I'm Beatrice Schultz. Welcome to our weekly show, College Smart Radio, where we help you tackle the runaway costs of a college education. Our show is all about bringing up-to-date and practical advice to parents who are dealing with the cost of a college education for their kids. With many traditional private schools costing over $60,000 a year, a UC costing $35,000, and a California State University running $25,000, parents need more help than ever. We bring you that help by sharing ways to pay less, tapping into financial aid, and prioritizing your source of funds to make sure you get through the most expensive years of your life. Based on my own education and experience, I share my insights with you week in and week out. I hold a Bachelor of Science degree in Chemical Engineering and a Master's degree in International Business. I am a certified financial planner and the owner of the San Carlos-based college planning business, West Face College Planning. I host workshops and webinars on college planning and consult with parents on a daily basis. In addition to my insights, I bring in experts in many areas of the college process, from educators, counselors, financial professionals, admission officers, parents, and even students, you'll learn firsthand the ins and outs of how to pay for college and survive financially. In addition to our show, you can find lots of powerful information at our website, collegesmartradio.com. We have many articles that I've authored with up-to-date information on navigating the waters of paying for a runaway cost of college. We have a monthly e-newsletter full of content about college planning. We also have posted a glossary of key terms used in the world of college planning, terms like EFC, total cost of attendance, FAFSA, and so forth. And we have a link to our free community parent workshops and webinars that I host to teach parents about how to pay for college and how the financial aid system works. So let's get into today's show. The cost of college is a huge concern for everyone. Colleges justify the increased cost in part due to this due to state of the art facilities that they must keep running in order to attract the best students to their institutions. The concept of offering college courses online to reduce the cost of a college degree has been in the news a lot lately. And on today's College Smart Radio program, we're going to be discussing Straighter Line, a low-cost online alternative for students to take introductory college courses and receive college credit. My guest on today's show is Burke Smith. Burke is the CEO and founder of the online course provider Straighter Line. Before that, he co-founded the largest online tutoring provider for schools and colleges, Smart Thinking. As a writer about education and technology issues, Burke has been published by Wire Magazine, Wired News, Converge Magazine, University Business, and the National School Boards Association. He's also written chapters for books on educational policy for the American Enterprise Institute. Burke holds a master's in public policy degree from Harvard University's John F. Kennedy School of Government and a BA from Williams College. Burke is joining us from his office in Baltimore. Hi, Burke. Welcome to College Smart Radio. Thank you. Hi, Beatrice. Thanks so much for joining us on the show, Burke. Maybe we can start by tell us a little bit about Straighter Line and what was your drive to create this business? Sure. Uh, so Straighter Line offers general education courses. Those are the kinds of courses students take in their freshman and sophomore years. So <clears throat> like Economics 101, College Algebra, English Comp, Accounting 101, Psych 101, things like that. Um, we offer them all online and very, very affordably. So we charge $99 per month. It's a subscription. And students pay about $49 per course started. Uh, by charging on a subscription, it's much lower price and low risk. So students who are nervous about starting uh, can start, and if they don't succeed or realize, realize they bit off more than they can chew, they can stop quickly without a whole lot of uh, 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 dollars out of their pocket. 
Um, we have articulation agreements with about 40 colleges. Um, our articulation agreement is an agreement with the college that says that they will award credit for courses taken through us. So uh, the 40 colleges are on our website. Uh, they are a mix between public colleges, private colleges, some for-profit colleges. Uh, also, all of our courses have been reviewed and recommended by a group called the American Council on Education's Credit Recommendation Service, and that is a group of colleges that uh, review third-party courses and say, yes, this counts for credit or this doesn't. So the students come to us, enroll, take however many courses they need, and then transfer those credits to colleges that will award credit for those courses. So, Burke, how does this straighter line, how does the straighter line compare or what, how does it differ from the MOOCs that we hear about in the news or the massive online open courses? Sure. So, uh, MOOCs are, are very interesting and, and uh, a great way to get access to course material, to review or peruse subjects in which you're interested. Uh, what they haven't done is really create a pathway to credit. And uh, that's the big difference, is that we have a pathway to credit uh, for the colleges that will take it. And we are, uh, I want to be clear to your audience, as well as on our website, that uh, if a student is coming to us and wants to go to one of the colleges with whom we have an agreement, uh, that's terrific. But if they want to go to a college with whom we don't have an agreement, check with the college where you are going to make sure they will award credit for the courses. Uh, but the big difference is a pathway to credit um, and uh, for which we uh, charge a relatively small fee. Um, one of the things that is similar between both us uh, and uh, the MOOCs, and I also think is, is one of the um, sort of uh, coming issues in higher education, we were founded in 2008, or I founded it in 2008, uh, with two driving principles. Uh, one is that online courses really should be much, much cheaper than face-to-face -face courses because there's none of the overhead. There's none of the dormitories or the cafeterias or the climbing walls, or the football stadiums, the parking lots or security or anything else that has to be provided for an online course. So it should be much cheaper than a face-to-face -face course, yet 93% of colleges charge the same or more for online courses than they do for face-to-face. -face. So why the do they charge more for an online course, and what's their thinking behind that? So um, for the most part, colleges um, don't really want to, no, in, in, like any firm or any corporation or any anything that's offering a product or service, they don't really want to lower prices. Um, so colleges keep their online courses the same price as their face-to-face -face course because they're worried that if they offer it more cheaply, they'll have uh, students migrating from high-revenue face-to-face courses to low-revenue online courses. Um, so, the, uh, so that's why 93% of colleges charge the same or more, even though it's much, much cheaper to deliver an online course. Uh, the second principle is that online, if someone builds a course that looks like what a college would offer, that could be considered a college course. So you don't necessarily need to be a college to offer a college-level course. Um, and it's that kind of... Um, of principle that enabled straighter line, it's enabling all these MOOCs, uh, it's enabling lots of people to offer courses online that should be considered college courses but aren't necessarily being delivered by a college. So I know you're an expert on education policy. Um, how do you see this fitting into the future of what's going to be happening with college education? Um, well, we're right in the, I think, the middle, maybe not even the middle, maybe the beginning of sort of rethinking education policy, financial aid, uh, what's a degree, what counts as a degree, what it means in the marketplace, all of these questions are up for grabs uh, in large part because there are, is the possibility to do the same things colleges are doing much more cheaply with, uh, when, if you expand the, essentially the, the marketplace of providers. Uh, so down the road, I see um, lots of different options, more options than you have now. So there'll be some versions of uh, education that are uh, essentially free, where students who have the motivation and desire can learn and everything they want to and get credits on a competency basis by passing certain tests and get the equivalent of a degree for you know very little. Uh, and there will still be the other end of the spectrum, which is sort of high-touch residential experiences for 18 to 22-year-olds, which uh, continue to be very, very expensive. But you also have lots of different versions in the middle. So why not you know, a year with something like straight line and then three years at a residential campus? Or why four years? Why not two years at a high-end residential campus? Those are the sorts of models that will evolve over time. But um, uh, figuring that out is going to require policymakers to think a lot about what it means to subsidize higher education, uh, what the uh, public good uh, really is, and, uh, and who gets access to all the taxpayer subsidies that go to fund uh, colleges today. Yeah, it's, uh, 
it, it's really so from a, the cost of college perspective, and I talk to parents every day. It is um, crazy how many parents feel they don't have a choice, or that they have developed an expectation with their families that they don't have a choice and they're spending a lot more money that they can afford the children and the students and there's so much student debt out there which is crazy. One of the things we talked about is that there is actually no financial aid available for taking any courses through Straighter Line. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So um, for people put it on a credit card, they pay. I mean, kind of take me through the process of how a student might think about First of all, could they get everything they need to have an equivalent of one year of college? And second of all, how, what would be the process for them to go through? Yeah, so let me, um, let me sort of answer one more question, sort of talk about why there's no access to financial aid. Uh, so we are not accredited. We're not allowed to be a college. We're not allowed to be accredited because to be accredited, you must offer an entire degree. Uh, we are simply offering courses. Uh, while the distinction seems a little uh, strange to a uh, to a, an, a, an observer or a parent who says, well, my kid transfers credits or all the time, so why can't a course provider be a college where they must offer a degree? But that's the case. So we're not allowed to be a college. When you're not allowed to be accredited, students can't get access to financial aid. Now, that's okay for us because our prices are so low that, uh, that it is very possible uh, for many, many people to take advantage of this low-cost option. Uh, so, uh, so if a student wants to do that, they come to us and they peruse our website and find the courses that they want to take. They enroll, uh, they pay with a credit card, and, um, and then they start immediately. Um, so because the courses are uh, self-paced, so our, most of our courses are self-paced and tutor-supported, so when a student's stuck, they click a button and work live with a tutor. Uh, the students can move at their own pace, and they can save even more money if they are going to move very quickly because they're priced on a subscription basis, um, and uh, or if they're worried about being able to complete, they um, uh, this is a way to keep the overall prices down as well. So when students finish, uh, they successfully pass the exams that are embedded in the courses. Uh, There is proctoring services that are part of the course. Uh, So there is uh, academic integrity and identity verification. They tell us where they want those credits transferred, and we will then transfer the credit to uh, to the appropriate college. Brooke, I'm going to interrupt you right now because we're going to take a break. You're with us on College Smart Radio, where my guest today is Burke Smith, the CEO and founder of Straighter Line. We'll be right back with Burke Smith on College Smart Radio. For more information on today's topic, visit collegesmartradio.com or call area code 650-587-1559. College Smart Radio continues in moments on AM 1220 KDOW. Contact Beatrice Schultz at collegesmartradio.com or call area code 650-587-1559. Now, back to College Smart Radio with your host Beatrice Schultz on AM 1220 KDOW. Welcome back to College Smart Radio, where we help you tackle the runaway costs of college. I'm Beatrice Schultz. I'm talking with my guest, Burke Smith, the CEO of Straighter Line. Straighter Line offers college courses online that earn real college credit. We all know that college is expensive and will most likely be some of the most costly years for a family. Understanding how to navigate the college process to save everywhere you can is a smart thing to know. To help families be on this radio show, I host community workshops live and via webinar several times a month that explain the costs of various colleges, how the financial aid system works, and things to consider to prepare yourself for this tremendous expense. You can find my workshop schedule and register at College Smart Radio. Radio.com. Burke, we were just talking about the Straighter Line program, and you and I cut you off when you were just talking a little bit about whether a student can get all the courses they need to effectively transfer a full year worth of college before into and then go to a more traditional college setting. Yes, absolutely. So uh, we offer uh, about 50 courses in total, uh, all of which are the kinds of courses students might take in their freshman or sophomore years. Uh, we even have a special deal where students can, uh, for uh, $1,299, uh, $1,299, students can get 10 courses uh, access for uh, t- uh, for one year, and that will transfer to any of the colleges that will award credit for our courses. Uh, so students don't have to do a whole year. They can do pieces of it, one course or two courses or five or 10 or 20 even, but, uh, but they can definitely get uh, a full year of college that is transferable to uh uh, to a variety of schools. So we use the uh, twelve ninety nine. Um, is that's uh, would be equivalent to the tuition, I guess. And then what would students expect to pay for books as as compared to a traditional um, 
college college environment? So, uh, yeah, many of the courses uh, do require textbooks. Some don't, but many do. Um, the uh, those that do, we've deliberately. Um, chosen books that are uh, a little older than others, such that there are viable used book markets for these books. So students have the option to buy a new book, which, as you know, could be expensive, uh, or an e-book, which is cheaper, or a used book, which is usually cheapest. And um, so there's no firm number on the, on the uh, book cost because it will vary by course and by the number of courses and by the type of book. But we've gone as far as we can go to make sure that, uh, that there are, are very affordable options for these books. So would it be reasonable to think that for $1,000 a student might be able to buy all the books they need for a year of school? Oh, yeah, I absolutely. Mean, it's, yes. it's more exactly. common in a traditional college environment. They might be spending 1500 or 2000 if they buy them new. But used, you might oh, be yeah. able to get them I'd, for 1000 I'd say 1000 or, or most likely less. Okay, so if I was going to compare this to a traditional college, it would be equivalent to getting, um, taking, sorry, about twelve ninety nine plus a thousand dollars. Any other expenses that a student would expect to incur? Nope, nope. And then from the again, my my, my original expertise is in public policy, and to uh, put that in perspective, that might be comparable to say to tuition and, and uh, uh, public uh, community college tuition in California, but we don't get any taxpayer support. So um, so all of this is uh, it just gives you a sense of just how much cheaper. Uh, online courses can be to deliver. Sure, and it's going to be a different fit for a student also. Uh, That's right. And, and it, I, I, in fact, I've read some of your um, some of the articles that you wrote about the fact that a big issue in California is that a lot of kids aren't able to take the courses that they need at the community college, and so that this opens up an op- opportunity. Could, could and just actually as we're talking about that topic, could students be who are at a community college take some courses through straight or line in order to meet up meet all the requirements they may need to meet the, the requirements to I guess fulfill a full year of college. Yeah, so this is um, <clears throat> this question of what does and doesn't transfer is at the heart yeah. of uh, a lot of the controversy in higher ed today. So at the at the heart of the controversy in California right now about um, you know will the the community college CSU and UC systems. Uh, allow credit to be transferred from providers like Straighter Line and uh, some of the MOOC providers. Um, so in California, uh, right now, the community colleges uh, probably would not award credit for our courses. They might. It would have to be on a case-by-case basis. So I couldn't say you know, to your audience, yes, this course will transfer. What would have to happen is a student would need to go to the college and say, will you agree to award credit for a Straighter Line course? If so, then they would come and sign up with us. Now, having said that, we do have a a college in California with whom we do have an articulation agreement. Uh, Concordia University in Irvine is a uh, is a partner college. So if students take courses from us and then go to Concordia University, they will award credit for the courses. Um, but there was legislation recently introduced, uh, sort of asking the the, the uh, community college and CSU and UC systems to award credit from these other providers. And it really is a, a landmark or maybe symbolically important legislation for the whole country um, as to whether low-cost providers of online courses are going to be recognized by traditional higher education. So that that new so is there new California legislation in place to to offer that credit acceptance, or is that still in the works? In the works, it was in, introduced, okay. uh, which is not the same as passed. Yeah, <laughs> and um, uh, and I imagine there, and I, I imagine, in fact, I know there are um, uh, there will be a lot of talk and discussion about it. There already is. Uh, we'll see if it passes or not. But even if it doesn't pass, uh, I think it is uh, it is an important symbol that at some point uh, governors and policymakers and legislators and others uh, may have to say, okay, you know, colleges aren't going to award credit on their own because they don't want lower priced access. So we're going to intervene with our own public systems. And is California an example state? So you're dealing with states all over the U.S. that has kind of a one of the worst, if we want to call it that, availability of, of courses at the community college? Or are we average in California? Just kind of let my audience know. Um, so this Tend, and one of the reasons it's so difficult is it tends to um, uh, devolve into a, a school-by-school decision. So any given school can make decisions about what credits it will and won't, or what it will and won't award credit for, and which makes it very difficult to get some kind of universal um, 
be able to tell people, you know, with some degree of confidence that these courses will be accepted at, you know, California or New Jersey or wherever, uh, which is why we have specific articulation agreements with institutions such that there is no ambiguity for students. Uh, but California has been uh, more difficult in the past, I think, in large part because it's more centralized. Um, and uh, But interestingly, this legislation that's come up uh, is also the first in the nation. So it has a combination of kind of be having a, the largest crisis because more, more, more students are being turned away, as well as being the most forward thinking on the legislation has been introduced. And perhaps those are related, but, uh, but it is an interesting place to watch right now. Let's talk a little bit, uh, get, to get back to straighter line. Let's talk, uh, can you share with us a little bit of the statistics about your pass rate, success rates for the courses? Sure. Um, so about 65% of courses started are successfully completed, and success means a uh, passing grade, uh, which is about the same or higher than what you might get at uh, most colleges. Um, it is far, far higher than what you're seeing in traditional, uh, no, traditional, in, in, uh, in MOOC providers. You know, MOOC providers have sort of, uh, pass rates or uh, completion rates in the 5 to 10% range. Uh, once students do successfully pass our courses and then matriculate at one of our partner colleges, uh, over 90% are still enrolled after the first year. Um, and what that tells me is that straight line is a great low-risk low way to get started. So it's a great way to take a few courses. If it turns out you're ready and motivated to finish college, uh, then you move on to a place where you take on additional risk in terms of loans and, and, uh, and debt. But, um, but at the same time, you're more, more likely to complete and get the value for that degree. And, and what is the, um, are there, what's the time or is there a statistic of, are, is it common that these kids or these students you have, because I know you also, you said, said a fair number of your students are over 25, that are taking these courses are getting the courses done in one year or they may take more than a year? What's kind of the average time of duration oh, yeah, to get sure. an equivalent, I guess, of a one year equivalent? Yeah, so um, the students spend on average kind of uh, uh, 35 to 40 days per course. Um, when taken sequentially, a lot of students, you know, take them in bulk. They might take two or three at a time, so that that uh, uh, changes the number. But when taken sequentially, it's roughly 35 to 40 days. Uh, there is a big variance, you know. So we do see some students will take two or three months, uh, four months. We see other students who do it really quickly. Uh, I know there are some students. We read about it in forums where people talk about us. Uh, all of our all of our information is very public, so our syllabi are public as well as all the materials necessary. And so we know there are students who will come to our website, download our syllabi, get the materials they need, study, 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 and then when they're ready to kind of move through the course, they then enroll and kind of do as many courses as they can quickly, which is great. That's uh, that's really terrific for a student who's that motivated to do all that work and then come and take those tests. That's a great student. That's a student that's going to succeed. So we see everything from folks sort of doing all the work in advance and then working with us to sticking with us for a while, uh, but it really depends on the, uh, the student's desire to finish the course and how fast they want to go. So it's very flexible. Now, one of the things you talked about is that one of the differences between MOOCs and straight or line is that you do offer tutoring or support for students. So how do you manage that when pe students are all taking the courses on their own time? And just so I can understand yeah, that. Uh, good question. So, uh, so several things. Um, first, uh, when students come to our site, uh, we started with self-paced tutor-supported courses. Uh, recently, we included the ability for students to choose between a self-paced tutor-supported course or a professor-led course. Uh, so it's up to the student to figure out you know, what type of course they want. We give them information and statistics they can use to make that decision. Um, but when a student is uh, ready to access tutoring services, and this is my first company's offerings, um, uh, we have live 24-7 math tutors, for instance, or uh, live tutors in chemistry or physics or whatever it is. So students move into the material. When they are stuck, they click a button, and they're working live with the tutor. And uh, in math, it could be at 3 in the morning, uh, for instance. So there's always academic So they are really li live? You have tutors that are online at 3 in the morning ready to answer questions? Or is this an automated tutoring system? Or? No, no, it's real people okay. know, available at that time. They say, and, hey, uh, I'm so, available. That's my hour. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's, a, that's absolutely So mm -hmm. and just a, a tangent. That's, uh, I, so I started Smart Thinking in 1999 uh, with that premise is that uh, we could offer these sorts of tutoring services that colleges would buy into, which they did. And uh, there are probably 500 colleges around the country that use the service. I'm not involved with it anymore. It's now owned by Pearson. But we do use the uh, 
tutoring services to provide academic support for uh, our courses. Hey, Burke. And for um, students who have non-academic uh, questions, we have I'm sorry, advisors. we've come to the end of the show, and I really uh, enjoyed talking to you. And thanks so much for sharing so much about Straighter Line. And I'm I will have a link to the Straighter Line website on my website, CollegeSmartRadio.com, for any of our listeners who want to learn a little bit more. Thanks for joining us on College Smart Radio. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks. College can be a huge expense, so make sure you make the right choices that meet your budget. And it just makes plain good sense to save some money if you can. Well, that wraps up another weekly show of College Smart Radio. We hope you picked up some new information today that can help you figure out ways to manage the runaway costs of college. You can hear us each week here on 1220 AM KDOW, Saturdays at 3 PM. We promise to bring you up-to-date information from the front lines of helping parents deal with the most expensive years of their lives. For a link to a podcast of this show and our prior weekly shows, go to our website, collegesmartradio.com. In addition to our podcast, you'll also find a schedule of our upcoming shows. This is Beatrice Schultz. Thanks for tuning into College Smart Radio. We look forward to sharing more helpful information with you next week. You've been listening to College Smart Radio with Certified Financial Planner, Beatrice Schultz. If you have questions on today's topic, log on to collegesmartradio.com or call area code 650 650- 587 1559. That's 650 587 1559. Join us next week at this time for another edition of College Smart Radio on AM 1220 KDOW.